the chat. If you don't have it, please add a comment on the chat on the side and somebody will send you a link. I wanted to announce that we are recording the meeting as we usually do with our working group meetings for Knative and this uh, recording will later on be available on the Knative YouTube channel. So without any further ado, uh, let's dive into the first topic, which is the uh, a TLC election announcement. I think Brenda Chan is talking about that. Hey everyone, uh, I'm Brenda. Uh, I'm representing VMware on the Knative Steering Committee. Um, I think a bunch of you know that we've been putting together our process for our first TLC election. Um, so I sent out an email earlier this week to uh, the Knative Dev mailing list. Um, for people to submit their nominations for um, who could be nominated for the next TOC. Um, so everyone um, is eligible um, who are currently on the TOC and approvers with at least three months tenure. Um, people can self-nominate or nominate other people. Um, so if you want to nominate someone, just send an email to the Knative Steering Committee Google Group email address uh, by the 23rd, and then we're going to start opening up our uh, election. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out on the Knative Slack. We hang out in toc-steering-questions, I think it is. Uh, but anywhere in general is fine, too. We'll make sure we can uh, answer your question. Cool. Uh, thank you very much. And we are going to move on to announcements by uh, working groups. And the first one is eventing with Alexander Slominski and Hi. Gabby Odom. Yeah, go ahead. Hi. I hope you can hear me. <clears throat> this is just a very quick uh, announcement that we are looking for people that are using NATS NATS streaming uh, in Knative eventing. Um, we are looking in particular for maintainers of it. If you are using it and uh, you would like Knative eventing to keep supporting it, it's very good. Let us know. There is a GitHub issue. You can find it in this uh, Google Doc and notes. And uh, come and uh, you know make sure we know how you are using it and uh, we make sure it will be supported in future. Um, Davey, do you want to say something about it? Yeah, just just quickly, this is Davey Odom from SAP. Uh, we've had some people step up from the Nats community already who are interested in taking over, but I think, you know, having more people involved is always better. And um, as a former maintainers, we're happy to help facilitate handover and, and help the process along. That's all, and of course, uh, come to Knative users and you know let us know how you are using eventing, not just for nuts streaming. Um, check in our Slack channel eventing. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Alec. Um, next next up is networking, uh, networking working group. Yeah, so uh, Dan uh, is yes. not here, so I'm filling in for him. Uh, so the updates. So the first update is Courier is a new ingress that supports Knative and the difference, main difference with Istio, Contour, Glue, and uh, I guess Kong that we already support is that Courier was specifically written for Knative and it's also pretty lightweight compared to uh, Istio Ambassador doesn't require any specific CRD. So that's something uh, you can try today. Um, Similarly, there's a new, uh, if you don't want to use search manager, which is pretty heavy weight for auto TLS and um, uh, let's encrypt to get certificate for your Kennedy service automatically. There's a new uh, HTTP one solver, which does uh, just that part, solving the challenge for let's encrypt. Um, the third one is something very important if you use any of the Istio tooling. So today the tooling shows you the flows between services in your mesh and metrics, errors, etc. But it's scoped by service. And the problem with Knative is we create one uh, Kubernetes service per revision. So those tools were not very useful for Knative because you would get one per revision and it wouldn't would 
show you a, a good overall view. And now basically with the tagging feature, you can group services into the same overall service and it shows up as one clean service in the UI. So that's what this canonical service feature does. And finally, this is a big one. So in Istio 1.5, um, we fix all the issues in Knative uh, working with the Istio team where now we support MTLS strict. So what this means is before we were supporting MTLS permissive where you could, permissive means you can connect through plain text or TLS and strict mode enforces all the flows within the mesh to be uh, TLS. So that's a pretty big change. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next up is Vincent with Operations uh, Working Group. Yes. Hi, this is uh, Vincent um, working with Operation Work Group. Here's uh, some of the uh, key points uh, as information I would like to deliver. Um, first, we have, let's say, official installation guide for Operator as well, which has been released along with 0 0.13 really. So keep on doing that for sure for 14. And second one, since the operator CR will be the choose all source for us to config, serving and eventing, here's the, what I documented as a guideline for the CRs on how to config our serving and eventing with those operator CRs. Uh, it's still under review at this moment. Um, I would like to encourage people who are interested in installation with operator, please take a look at this PR and you will find all the capabilities we can do at this moment regarding the operator CRs. And I also plan to make it available under the repository of operator as well. And for 14, I know that for like our key component like a serving and even it has already been released that a few days ago, operator usually has like a few days, one week time buffer for us to sync up and we'll cut our release I mean, early next week. And for the 14, it was been such a milestone for operation is due to that we have a we will both release the two operators separately and we also release a all-in-one operator. Since we already set up the uh, um, repository for the integration under Sandbox at the moment, we will release one integrated operator for Knative as well under that one. So with the 14, we can either install separately or install all-in-one. And for operator, we will um, in terms of serving component, we currently only support the Istio as the ingress. Uh, for the next release, we're targeting to have like, support of multiple ingresses, um, make it able to config with the operator CR so that we can pick up different um, and ingress folks alike. So yeah, that's all for me. Thank you. Thank you, Vincent. Um, the last update is from the client working group, and Roland is up. Yep. Hello. So my name is Roland Huss. I'm from, from Red Hat, and I'm one of the working group leads for client. And yeah, first a quick overview of what, what, where we stand with the KN client. So KN is a CLI tool which you can use to interactively create Knative serving and eventing objects. So the serving support is quite complete. So actually, we have all cloud operations for services, and you can in, uh, <clears throat> inspect services as you like directly from the CLI. We have uh, support for traffic split that you can interactively and <coughs> declare your traffic splits and as well at the auto scale parameters. And finally, quite new is an export for services. So actually you can do interactively and incrementally build up your services on the command line and then finally export those services into a machine readable format like YAML or JSON. So this can all be done for, for KN with serving. We have uh, also basic support for Knative eventing. So actually we have good support for all the, not for all, but for most of the built-in sources, which uh, Knative eventing comes with, like the ping source, the API server source or sync binding, the support for the container source, which is new in Knative eventing 014, uh, or so 
or, or is, is, is uh, back again, let's say like this, <coughs> uh, is already in the works. So this will, you can expect soon in one of the next releases for KN. And we support, support full management for triggers. Then uh, a new thing is that we in the, uh, that used a new GitHub repository. It's called client contrib. And this client contrib is supposed or is, uh, uh, has been introduced for holding all created extensions to the client, like plugins. So KN itself has a kind of a plugin architecture, much like Cube Control itself. And so in client contrib, we will host uh, the plugins that we are going to support. So feel free to have a look there as well. And, but we are just uh, starting up there. So it's just pull requests which are pending, but you will see soon there more content. And then finally, um, yeah, you can try out the KN client with a, quite a download directly, or you can use also Brew if you're on Mac on S directly and install it directly with a, an own tab from Knative. So I, I pasted here the installation command. And um, yeah, finally, actually, we also look always for contributors for sure, like, like any other project as well. But we also are looking quite, um, quite eagerly for feedback, especially UX related because, uh, so whether we are really have a kind of a good use experience, like are the comments intuitive, are the comments are consistent, are the options naming are good. All of these, uh, let's say soft things are really very important to us. And the more feedback we get, the more opinions we have there, the better. And so if you have any, any opinions on that, please feel free to reach us on Slack. That was, there's a CLI channel or open just an issue in the Knative client repository. Thanks, that's for me. Thank you so much, Roland. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and now we are going to move on to uh, the demo part of the meeting. Uh, Joanna is going to present, I think to everyone now, uh, tracking the Bitcoin ledger. So, Joanna, whenever you're ready. Cool. Um, I'll share my screen. Hopefully, people can see it. So, can anyone see my screen? I should caveat with that I live in the middle of nowhere, so the internet's not always great here. But uh, can everyone see this? Yes, it works. Cool. Yep. Um, so uh, thanks for letting me share uh, this demo with you. Um, I said uh, last week to um, everyone that I have actually never done a presentation before. So uh, if you if you really don't like it, let me know. But maybe not on here. I'm joking. Um, so I joined the world of cloud native about six months ago. Um, I work for IBM as a software engineer. Um, I before that, I actually had done nothing with um, cloud native before. I was got a background in data engineering, so very different sort of world. Um, and I wanted to try out Knative eventing because I thought it looked quite cool. Um, so this was like my first experiment with with Knative eventing. Um, so uh, the demo is basically. Um, just really simple. Uh, there's a source, which is a Bitcoin WebSocket. Um, then the messages are sent to the car, and these messages are then displayed in real time, uh, consumed and displayed in real time uh, via a UI. Um, it highlight. I uh, wanted to highlight like Knative eventing in a quite a simple way. So there's just a broker. Uh, a trigger or a couple of triggers, depending on which one you're deploying, and then a producer and a consumer. And there are actually um, maybe two or three consumers. If buzzing is because there's a wasp in the room next to me, which is a bit creepy. Um, uh, it should also show streaming events in real time, um, in-stream transformations and push-based front ends. Um, so I use the Bitcoin transaction data because actually it's it's a real rich data stream that's free. Um, there's also finhub.io, which is a good one for financial data that you could use instead. Um, I think, you know, you can use Twitter, but it's pretty overused. And um, 
I think this is like quite a nice alternative for companies that maybe work in finance or uh, insurance, things like that. Um, just like some ideas of what you could do with this data set. I think you could like predict transaction fees. Um, you could visualize um, the data. So this, this link is actually selling you a Bitcoin wallet, which I'm not promoting in any way, but they have a really cool visualization on their website. So um, probably not done through eventing, but it's still really cool. Um, and you could set up some classification for transactions and send uh, push-based alerts and things like that, which I actually will show uh, like a classification uh, method later. Um, so you need some stuff before you uh, deploy this. Um, this is the stuff you need. Um, the code can be found um, on my repo, on the following repo. So the first one is uh, this scenario that I'm going to show today. Um, and the Knative Bitcoin WebSocket event source is just the WebSocket source um, for the Bitcoin data, uh, which is also available. Um, I've got a blog, which probably is a bit lower level than anyone here would need to read, but um, it's just like an introduction into things like uh, eventing, why you do eventing, things like that. Um, we're still so I think the, we're still seeing the first slide. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, oh, it moved. Did it move? Is it back again? It's on yeah. slide three. Okay. Okay. Yeah weird but anyway okay um let me know if it hangs like if it hangs i might need to do a bit of jumping around um so i wanted to um like for me i wanted to see like why would i actually do this like why would i do eventing as a business or you know what are the advantages for me especially uh someone who does not know um or not really technical um, there's other ways of doing some of this stuff. I mean, there's other ways of doing exactly what I'm about to show. Um, so I really wanted to highlight some key advantages and these were just some of them. Um, I think Knative eventing really lends itself to push-based messages, messaging. I think um, there's real true decoupling of producers and consumers. And I think it can be really um, useful if you want to do things like fraud detection. Um, also, some ML ops stuff like the rendezvous architecture, I have not implemented yet in K20, but it's something that I would like to look at. Um, can you see this slide? Still we on. can see the slide, why events driven. Yeah, we're still on yeah, slide three. It yeah, it's yeah. really true. I don't know why it's doing that. I think you have to go ahead and wiggle between. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Yay. Um, so this is what I'm going to deploy initially. So we've got our WebSocket, which is a web, uh, web, a WebSocket that's supplied by, by uh, blockchain.info. Um, we've got an event source, seeing the messages, turning them into cloud events, and then sending them on to the broker. And then we've got an event display, which is subscribe to these events that come from uh, the blockchain source and it's updating a UI front end in real time. Um, so let me show you. Can you see my terminal? Cool. Yes. 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 Okay, so I'm just gonna apply. Um, so I first, oops. So first, I'm just going to um, create a namespace and um, enable Knative eventing in that namespace. Can um, uh, you zoom in a little bit in the terminal, please? Sorry? Uh, if you can zoom in a little bit in the oh, terminal. Oh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, that was not what I wanted to do, but... that a bit better um yeah so then i'm gonna uh, just um deploy the uh, web socket source 
if you want to build it yourself, there's already a Docker image, but if you wanted to build it yourself, all the stuff is in the repo, so you can do that. Um, I'm not going to verify the events now, but you are, in the next slide, there's some commands that you can use to verify. Um, I'm then going to deploy a trigger, which is going to say that I want to subscribe a service that I have not deployed yet to um, these events. And then I'm going to deploy my uh, UI service, which takes the messages and displays them on a UI, which probably in a real microservice world should be two separate services, but they're one at the moment. Um, and there are Kubernetes deployments. So there's two YAML files that I deploy, one for the deployment and one for the service. And then if I go to um, my, 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 my UI site where it's sent to, you can see the messages is it true uh, in real time? Um, and this is done with a server sent events library in Go. Um, I'm gonna flip back. I'm just gonna delete the these two services because I'm gonna deploy another one and my computer will die if um, if I leave everything running, unfortunately. Okay, so that's the first part in its most simplest form. I It uses, um, the, these deployments are both Kubernetes native deployments, they're not K-native serving deployments. Um, these are some useful commands um, that you can use to, to deploy, to view the, the, the what you've got going on and to verify the messages. Um, And I wanted to talk a bit about the WebSocket source that I'm using. So, um, like I said, you, you could swap it out for something else. Um, I would like to add this in in the future. I haven't done that yet. Um, but basically, um, this is like just a deep dive on the code for the WebSocket source. Um, um, so, import the eventing and WebSocket clients. So, I'm using the Gorilla WebSocket one. I should also caveat that this was also the first time that I've ever used Go, so there might be better ones to use. Um, I defined the WebSocket source URL, so this is actually for the WebSocket library, not the cloud native source, although I do use it there as well. Um, I read the sync in from config, um, which is pushed from the YAML file that I deploy into the deployment. Um, if you want to get, so I reference the broker URL as my sync. If you want to get the broker URL, if you don't know what it is, this is the command to do it, and then it will give you your um, your broker address. Um, can you see the next part of the code, or do I need to shuffle again? Let's shuffle again, anyway. Um, so uh, the next part, I pass the config environment variables. Uh, we set up a cloud event sync, and then we set up a cloud event client using HTTP transport. Um, then um, we connect to the WebSocket, that, the URL that we specified earlier, which is the blockchain.info. Blockchain.info requires that you send it this message, op unconfirmed sub, to initiate the transaction stream. So we do that. And then we read each transaction message from, from the web here, create a new cloud event for each message. Um, in this case, I set the type as WebSocket event. The source is set to the, the address that we gave at, as our uh, WebSocket source, um, and the message is the message of the transaction, which is going to be sent on. Um, there's like a Knative official WebSocket, which you can probably uh, play with as well and get it to do a similar thing, I guess. Um, like I said, this is just sort of how I 
approached creating it um i found it quite hard actually to find in the docs like uh, what i needed to do it was a little bit like unclear for someone that's completely new but um but it was okay um so the next part that i wanted to show is um this sort of scenario and your screen share is still stuck at um the keynote slide nine i think slide nine okay that's is this okay So it should be on slide 11 now. Maybe try uh, turning off your video. I think it's going to make it easier on the okay. connection. Yeah. And we can still see slide 9, but on the uh, edit mode of the presentation, so not the presentation mode of the okay. presentation. Can you see this now? We are seeing the presentation. Yes, we see part two, classify and reply. Yeah, now. okay, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is like um, the second part of what I started to do and I can show um, this part working as well. So this was slightly, uh, like a slightly more, I guess, um, built out uh, example of what you could do. So we have our container source um, and our broker and the event display that we deployed in the first part. But this time we also have a classification service which is going to take the transactions and it's just going to classify them into a size. So it's going to just to classify them as small or large, like very simple. And then it's going to send that size classification back out as another message as another event back into the Knative eventing ecosystem and that message will then be consumed by another service um, and the idea is that this uh, could be something like um, doing like some sort of transaction in the fly and then maybe uh, the other service needs to know okay these these transactions are really large I need to alert someone about this um, that kind of business use case so I'll show that one as well. Can you see my terminal screen? Uh, not, not yet, no. It might just take a while to sort of catch up with where I am. Think of it as sous vide. Is it? Is it? Uh, I want. I wonder if it's on a different screen. No, it's not up yet. That's strange. Hmm. I wonder, uh, Joe, if the if the terminal is on a different. Uh, screen on your laptop uh, no it's actually on the same screen so it's kind of strange I only have one screen so it's a bit weird okay um, and the anyway it's still showing the slide deck yeah okay that's a bit tricky um, not really sure why because I've sort of shared my screen so that is a bit odd. Um, seems like maybe it's just having trouble catching up with where where I am. Uh, I could uh, try and stop sharing and resharing again, and maybe you'll land. Okay. On yeah. Let's. Days. Yeah. Let's try that. Um, try that. Uh, can you see a terminal screen? Uh, 
Uh, I can't see it. Can anyone else see it? I only see Joe's static profile picture. Yeah, I think it failed to, pre it says presentation, but it doesn't show anything. Mm, that's strange. Um, yeah. It's weird, because it says you are presenting to everyone in my screen. Um, okay, I can just talk through like the last bit. I mean, the repo is there, so if it comes up, just let me know, um, and then I can deploy while I'm talking. It um, looks to yeah. me like it might be prompting you for which screen you want to share, maybe hidden under your main window or something like that. <coughs> I've had that happen to me with Hangouts before. Let me have a look. So it says you are presenting. And then. There we go. Now we got it. You've got, can you see this terminal window? We well, we, we see a see. message saying you are presenting, so I think we're seeing the same thing you are. Yeah, yeah, it's strange because I'm just on the same screen, so it seems like it's just playing catch up a bit, actually. I'm not really sure why. Maybe it's just really slow. I'm just trying to get rid of some of this. Yeah, so um, that just seems to not really want to says I'm presenting to everyone with my terminal screen. Oh, here we go. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thanks. No. Yeah. Okay. So um okay, so that this this makes it seem much more exciting than it really is, but now let's just do it anyway. Um so we've got the um source running. Um I don't have any other um I don't have any other services running at the moment. So I've got another folder called classification and in here I've got some YAMLs. Um, I'm gonna apply the, um, the another trigger, which is basically the same as the trigger we had originally, but it's just subscribed to um, a new service, which is gonna be my classifier service. So now I'm gonna deploy my classifier service. Um, and I'm also going to apply another trigger, which is basically going to be subscribed to by um, just a simple event display. So class is taking the messages um, and classifying them. And then this event, this uh, reply uh, display service is actually just um, taking the, the, the classified messages and um, showing them so the idea is that you would run these at the same time but my docker will die um okay. so now <clears throat> if we um get the logs for that one you should see But now we're seeing um, all the events coming through that have been classified with a size of small or large. Um, and, I mean, it's not like groundbreaking classification model, but um, just for simplification purposes, you know, uh, hopefully someone who wants to do something like this, this is more about how to set up rather than how to build a good classification model. Um, but basically that that's how you can send messages, have another service, um, do something to them on the fly, and then send a message back out to the ecosystem and consume uh, a new message that's the, the, that's the original message sort of um, transformed or enriched or whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm going to try and flick back to my presentation. This may fail miserably, but let's just try it. Uh, can you see this? Uh, no change yet. Okay, I'm just going to leave it here while I just talk through uh, the last bit. So um, when I built the classification service, I needed to unmarshal the message that comes through in the cloud event originally. Um, uh, the struct 
to unmarshal the message is in the repo for the uh, event source and it's also in the repo for running this demo. Um, it's a really simple classification model. It just takes the input values and then if there are a certain amount, it says it's large and otherwise it's small. I'd like to make it more interesting, but um, just for the fun of playing around or serves what it's meant to do. Um, what I wanted to show you, but seemingly can't because it doesn't like um, my screen, is um, some of the things that I wanted to add in the future. So I wanted to try out um, a more complex ML pattern uh, for like more ML ops. So I wanted to try and look at the, something like the rendezvous architecture, um, which I hope to do uh, soon. Uh, I'd like to add some other models as part of that. Um, that are maybe a bit more complicated than the one that I just showed. Um, and I like to try out the Python KN Cloud Events package and work with Python instead of Go on some of the services. Um, the repo is still a work in progress, but um, I hope to add some, some extra bits in the next couple of days. Um, there were some really good of information that I found, which you guys can't see on the slide, but I'm going to try and tell you what the URL descriptions were. Um, the Knative docs obviously are a good place to start. Um, I found a really good Medium article by, I'm going to say the name wrong now, but Zimin Wen, which was about exploring preventing image clarifiers. That was a really good uh, article that I went back to a lot of times to figure out how to do some of this stuff, especially um, for replying to the broker and things like that. Um, the Mete, the stuff from Mete at ML, um, especially for the cluster local stuff, I got really stuck on that when I was first deploying this. Um, and the Kmani Knative demos were really useful as well. Um, I highlighted some areas that I thought could be added to by the community. I think um, for me, the KN Cloud Events package docs. Um, I thought it would be nice to have a few more use cases for that. Um, I think if you know what it does already, it probably makes complete sense. But if you don't, it was really hard to, to sort of get going with it um, and know how to do stuff. Uh, I think also what would be nice are some more realistic business use cases and patterns for Knative eventing. I think, again, if you're if you're a developer and you're in this every day, you, you really get it. But if you're um, not so technical or a more like higher level business person trying to understand why this is good to do, um, it would be cool to have some, um, some real business use cases um, and maybe some more around uh, like the data science and ML stuff. Um, any feedback would be great. Um, I hope if I ever do another one, I can figure out why on earth it doesn't share my screen. I'm guessing it's probably network. Um, uh, uh, please play with the demo. Let me know what you think. And if you've got any ideas or suggestions, like it would be cool to know. Um, and that's about it. And sorry, you can't see the last slide, but I think <laughs> I explained it. It just showed up for a moment. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it just did. Yeah. Anyway, um, in spite of the tech problems, it was good. I'll yeah, thank you very much. Thanks. I'll try and share the slide deck um, with Maria. And obviously, um, if if you want, just go play with it and give it a try. And um, hopefully, you can find it interesting. And I think it'd be great yeah. uh, to get some of these uh, suggestions you had were fantastic. Um, as far as getting more documents and use cases and so forth. So uh, it is definitely a known pain point, uh, mea culpa and so forth. So, but thank you very much for this. This is very exciting and interesting, so. Thanks. Really good demo, thanks a lot. Thank you. Um, and so this, uh, we have uh, uh, some more minutes left and um, the idea is that maybe we discuss the demo or any thoughts that it brought up, or if you want to ask any questions, uh, this would be the time to to do it. So if anybody has any any other thoughts about 
uh, Joanna's demo, please uh, do speak up or uh, feel free to uh, chat on the chat box on the side. So I have one myself, um, which is uh, obviously I deployed the services as uh, Kubernetes services, which is which is fine. Um, I wanted to uh, try something with Knative Serving because I I actually wanted to to build some sort of scalability into into this at some point and try out uh, some scaling stuff. Um, so. Um, so it would be cool to see how other people will approach this. I obviously ran into the multiple ports issue uh, with Knative serving. Um, and there were some suggestions, but it would be really cool to see um, like what, what would be best practice way of doing this. Is it sort of how I've done it here? Or maybe there's other ideas for how you do something like that. You don't have to answer now, you can tell me later. Um, one question, you said you built a lot of this in Go, presumably because there were a lot of examples in Go. Um, what language would you have liked to use? It sounds like maybe Python? Um, yeah, so I wanted to learn Go anyway, and I like Go. Um, um, I, I would like to play with Python. I, actually, interestingly, unless I completely missed it, the KN Cloud package for Python has like a neat little booklet with it with some documentation, whereas I think the Go one has nothing. Um, so that made me want to use it even more. Um, I didn't, but that documentation was quite useful for doing it in Go anyway. Um, I think my next step would be to build out a service in Python and use that. Um, at IBM, I think most of my team would probably prefer to use like Java or something like that. I'm not really a big Java user, but I think that would probably be something they'd be looking to use. Um, but for me, yeah, probably Go or Python. I think it's also like the, the 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 audience of it. So I think people that do like data science and ML and stuff are really heavy into Python, which is what Carlos Santana has just typed. Um, so I think for those people to really engage and see what they can do, I think Python would be a good one to to use more and do more with. And it's definitely something I want to blog about and do in the future. Maybe uh, we can see another version of this demo with Python once some of like the screen share kinks are worked out. Yes, that would be cool. I think the screen kinks will probably be more difficult than the Python demo by the look of it, but we can try. So you talked a little bit about um, some of the resources that helped you get your environment set up correctly. Um, how often do you end up needing to, you know, update or set up your environment again? Um, does that cause a lot of pain when it happens, or is that something that at this point, you know, is pretty quick? So, actually, it has been quite painful. Um, I think, for example. One of the things that I did at the very beginning when I started playing with Knative was make a how to get up and running with Knative blog post, and I really regret it 
because whatever I wrote in there is now irrelevant and probably doesn't work anymore. Um, so I, and actually I wish that no one would write them because they're all different. Um, and that was quite uh, confusing. Um, I wrote my own install script that I ran uh, yesterday to deploy it, which just because I know it works. Um, I have run the new install scripts, um, which which seem uh, which seem fine. It'd be nice to uh, know like what the main changes are in the new ones, uh, why it's been done, um, just how to get running compared to how you used to run with the old ones like that. Um, I think sometimes just the background, I think, again, it's just the difference between being that you already know it and someone who just doesn't know what the hell they're doing. Um, just being more explicit, I guess. Uh, Joe, I was wondering, since we couldn't see uh, this slide when you were presenting, would you like to share your repo on the chat box so that other people can uh, sure. access the demo? Yeah, sure. Yes, the, the repo stories in the presentation would be amazing. And uh, we can uh, work together uh, later on so you can send me your slides and uh, I'm happy to share them, of course. Yeah, that would be really cool. Thank you. I'll just share them. Okay. Um, are there any uh, afterthoughts or any other comments anybody would like to make? Oh, um, one thought would be, I don't know how much extra time Joanna has, but um, you know, I know that we're gonna try to trim this to put on YouTube but a separate recording of just you know the screen screen recording of the slides and the demo um particularly since we had the screen share problems would be pretty nice yeah, yeah plus one yeah okay yeah i'll do that that's a good idea yeah uh, uh, okay. so, uh, sorry did you did you say uh, a separate recording that we do again or cutting the recording of the demo from this meeting i was I suggesting doing just a clean recording separately of the yeah. demo. Um, maybe use some software like OBS or something like that to um, to just go straight to YouTube. And, you know, it's great to yeah. have the interaction in the questions, but having a clean demo would also be, you know, a nice thing, particularly since the screen sharing seems to have some issues. Cool. Yeah, yeah I, I was thinking about that too. Yeah, cool. Awesome. So I think um, if uh, nobody else has any more questions, so we are reaching the end of our meetup today. And uh, I would like to ask you to please fill out a survey. If you have a few minutes, it only takes like three to five minutes so that we can have a sense of uh, how much you enjoy this event and, and what things we can change to improve it in the future, because this is the first k to community meetup. Um, so as you know, we uh, we are learning as we go and there are things that we can improve for sure. Uh, but we, uh, we really appreciate uh, all of you uh, coming up to meet each other and to talk. And I thank you so much again to Joe for, for the demo um, and for the discussion, everyone. So yes. Uh, the survey is also linked on the agenda, so if you cannot get to it right away, uh, please do so later in the day. And I think with that, 
uh, I'm going to say bye to you all and see you. The idea is to um, host this every three weeks. So we're going to send out an announcement uh, soon about the next meetup. And thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Cheers. Thanks for doing this. Awesome. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Thank you. Thank I just you. wanted to say thanks, Joanna, for uh, being the first to go and stand in front of the crowd to do a demo. Yeah, totally. It takes a lot of uh, courage to stand up there and do that. And you work through the technical stuff, the technical issues, real well. Yeah, you really, really did. I think she may have left. <laughs> yes. It'll still be on the recording. Yes. <laughs>